Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will identify the structures in the hemisection of the head and neck model. Let's start identification. This is the tongue, the cut section of the tongue, and it has extrinsic muscle, intrinsic muscle. I'm seeing one extrinsic muscle here. This is the genioglossus muscle. This is an intrinsic muscle. This is the superior longitudinal muscle is here. Tongue has extrinsic muscles like that of genioglossus muscle, hyoglossus muscle, chondroglossus muscle, styloglossus muscle, and palatoglossus muscle. All the muscles of the tongue, both extrinsic, intrinsic, intrinsic muscles are like that of superior longitudinal muscle, inferior longitudinal muscle, the oblique muscle, and the transverse muscles. All the muscles, both extrinsic and intrinsic, are innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, that is the 12th cranial nerve, except the palatoglossus, which is innervated by the vagus nerve through the pharyngeal plexus. Tongue is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. At the tip of the filiform papillae of the tongue, there is some keratinization. The tongue has anterior two-third, posterior one-third. We have the foramen cecum here. Foramen cecum is a site where the thyroid gland begins to start and thyroid gland goes through the tongue, goes in front of the hyoid bone and ultimately going in front of the thyroid and the tracheal cartilages. So this is the genioglossus muscle. Underneath that you will get the muscle. This is the hyoid bone. So we have the genio-hyoid muscle. We have the myelohyoid muscle. Tongue has tonsil on the posterior one third. We call it lingual tonsils, multiple lymphoid tissue here on the posterior aspect of the tongue. Okay. And just behind the tongue, we have the epiglottis here. And we have the median gloss epiglottic fold and vellicula on both sides. Tongue has also sensory innervation for from anterior to third general sensation carried by the lingual nerve a branch of the mandibular nerve and special sensation is carried by the caudate tympani branch of the facial nerve from the anterior two third except the valet papillae and the caudate tympani carries the taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue. From posterior one third of the tongue, taste sensation is carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve from extreme posterior part near the vellicula the taste sensation is carried by the vagus nerve. Okay, this is the cut section of the mandible. This is the palatine process of maxilla, and this is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. This is hard palate, this is soft palate. Soft palate has multiple muscles like that of the Tensor belly palatini, levator belly palatini, musculus evuli, and the palatoglossal muscle, palatopharyngeal muscle. The pharyngeal muscles, uh, I mean the, the soft palatine muscles are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus, with one exception, there is the tensor belly palatini that is innervated by the mandibular nerve. Okay, we got that. Now we'll go to the to identify the structure of the pharynx here. Pharynx has three parts. This is the nasopharynx. This is behind the nose and posterior nasal opening is called cona. This is called anterior nasal opening. Okay. Posterior nasal opening is called cona. This, are, this is the nares here and this is the nasopharynx behind the nose. Oropharynx behind the oral cavity, laryngopharynx behind the larynx. In the nasopharynx, we have the opening for the 
eustachian tube or auditory tube here also called pharyngotympanic tube it contains elastic cartilage and the elevation around it we call it tubal elevation or torus tuberius this is the area here little bit elevation elevation due to the presence of a muscle levator veli palateni so it is also called torus libitorius this is the tubal elevation if you go here posteriorly we'll get the muscle sulping of pharyngeus inside it we'll get the sulping of pharyngeus in the nasopharynx we have the opening for the auditory tube or eustachian tube or pharyngotympanic tube to the nasal to the nasopharynx this side on the other side the tube is communicated to the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity we have multiple lymphoid tissue here this is the palatine tonsil present in the tonsillar fossa bounded by the palatoglossal fold anteriorly posteriorly palatopharyngeal fold so this is lingual tonsil on the posterior one third of the tongue underneath the mucosa lymphoid structure multiple lingual tonsils here we call it pharyngeal tonsil and the roof of the nasopharynx roof and posterior part this is the pharyngeal tonsil and this part is called pharyngeal recess pharyngeal tonsil may be enlarged we call that condition adenoid a d e n o i d that may cause problem in children and they may have problem in the hearing and also they have always mouth breathing so due to blockage by adenoid so respiration respiration by mouth is taking place so there may be some changes in the bone development in the maxilla and around the mouth we got that so this is the nasopharynx this is the oropharynx oropharynx we have the palatine tonsil here okay and the laryngopharynx behind the larynx so pharynx is behind this is the laryngopharynx it continued as esophagus okay this is the larynx it has the cartilage epiglottis here we have the thyroid cartilage the cricoid cartilage and we have muscle here in the larynx multiple intrinsic muscle we know that all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid that should not shown here cricothyroid that is innervated by the external laryngeal nerve okay so we got the this area this area of the laryngopharynx it is called the piriform fossa so sometimes fish bone may impact there and may damage the internal internal laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve may be damaged due to the presence of the uh, a fish bone impacting in impacting this place okay in the larynx if we go again we have the vestibular fold the top one then this is the vocal fold vocal fold vibrate and we have phonation okay this is the vestibular fold for protection of the vocal fold this is the true fold and it contains the vocalis muscle okay. we got that if we go he if we, if we go there we'll get the cervical vertebral body this is the first cervical vertebral arch we know that first vertebra body has no body first cervical vertebra or atlas has no body no spine okay this is the first cervical vertebra this is the second cervical vertebra with odontoid process okay third cervical vertebra fourth cervical vertebra and the fifth cervical vertebra sixth cervical vertebra below the sixth cervical vertebra we have a lot of transition taking place beginning of the trachea when beginning of the esophagus below the six cervical vertebra these are the spinous process the second third fourth fifth sixth okay we got the spinous process of cervical vertebra the first cervical vertebra has no spinous process it is just like a circular ring okay we got that the structures here the spinous processes here okay now we'll find out the structure here we have gone through the soft palate we have we have learned the the 
muscles here and we test the vagus nerve by asking the patient to say the word a ah, a ah. if the patient utter the word a ah, a ah, the ebola should go up in case of paralysis it cannot happen also we can test the tongue hypoglossal nerve if we tell the patient to put two tongue forward the paralyzed side uh, the side which is paralyzed tongue will move in that direction uh, due to the action of the of the active side of the of the tongue 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 has two sided muscle so the paralyzed side if it is paralyzed it is pushed by the healthy side tongue muscles okay we have done here then if we go here this is the vestibule of the mouth it is bounded by the arch of the the teeth here okay uh, posteriorly anteriorly by the lip and cheek on the other side okay and th this is the vestibule of the mouth this is the oral cavity proper up to the palato glossal fold okay this is the oral cavity proper here this is the vestibule of the mouth we have some gland here sublingual gland is present here okay just at the the near the frenulum of the tongue we have the sublingual glands present here if you go to the to the pharynx we have the nasopharynx okay from the roof of the of the from the base of the skull here below the spinal bone up to the ebula we have the nasopharynx from the ebular part to the tip of the epiglottis we have the oropharynx then from the tip of the oropharynx to the beginning of the of the trachea is the laryngopharynx nerve supply of this part is from the maxillary nerve nerve supply of this part sensory innervation from the glossopharyngeal nerve and the sensory innervation from this part laryngopharynx by the vagus nerve now we'll identify the structures here in the nasal cavity and also the the base of the skull here this is the spinoidal sinus present in the body of the spinoid bone here the spinoidal sinus it opens into the spinoethmoidal recess it opens into the spinoethmoidal recess not in the meatuses then this is the superior concha superior meatus it it is a site of opening opening for the posterior group of ethmoidal eth air cell this is the middle concha concha is also called turbinate and underneath the middle concha if you can separate out this part we'll see the bulla ethmoidalis underneath it bulla ethmoidalis or ethmoidal bulla is the site of opening of the middle group of ethmoidal air cell then we'll get another semi lunar lunar depression here inside the just underneath the middle concha and uh, in the in the middle meatus we'll get the hiatus semilunaris in the hiatus semilunaris there is opening anterior part from the frontal sinus this is frontal sinus it opens into the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris that is covered here by the middle concha so frontal sinus opens into the by means of frontal nasal duct into the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris we also call it infundibulum of the ethmoid bone okay then the same place just behind the frontal sinus we have the opening for the anterior group of the ethmoidal air cell in the hiatus semilunaris in the posterior part of hiatus semilunaris that is not shown here that is underneath the middle concha posterior part of hiatus semilunaris is the site of opening of the maxillary sinus this is the inferior concha also called inferior turbinate underneath we have the inferior meatus so superior meatus under superior concha middle meatus under middle concha inferior meatus under inferior concha the structure open here is the nasolacrimal duct here the junction between anterior one third and posterior two third of the inferior meatus site of opening of the nasolacrimal duct if you go to the nasal cavity 
here this is the lateral nasal wall okay these are cartilages this they all are hyaluronic cartilages here okay here we have the elastic cartilage in the epiglottis hyaluronic cartilage in the thyroid cartilage this is the cricoid cartilage hyaluronic cartilage okay we have the intravertebral disc these are basically composed of fibrocartilage outside annulus fibrosus inside nucleus pulposus that is the nucleus pulposus is the remnant of the of the notochord in an embryo okay so here again the hyaline cartilage and this is the vestibule of the nose vestibule of the nose contains some coarse hair we call it vibrace this is the lymen nasi this junction the vestibule and this is the atrium of the nose and this is the agar nasi this is called agar nasi so we have the sinuses here frontal sinus we have the spinal sinus and we have also on the other side we'll get the maxillary sinus ethmoral air cell they light in the skull their sinuses uh, also maintain the air conditioning inside the nasal cavity okay they are very essential to produce good articulation by adding resonance to the voice and they keep this moist all the time so what is oilers ring of tonsil oilers ring of tonsil composed of the palatine tonsil the lingual tonsil the pharyngeal tonsil the tubal tonsil okay what is the blood supply of the tonsil there are many arteries that's to supply the tonsil most important is the tonsillar branch of the facial artery it is also getting ascending pharyngeal artery then the dorsal uh, lingual artery okay so multiple arteries supply the tonsil but most important is the tonsillar branch of the facial artery okay and these are the muscles the pharynx okay we'll get some muscles here these are the constrictor muscle of the pharynx we have the superior constrictor we have the middle constrictor inferior constrictor we'll discuss those in another video and that's all about the structure in the nasal cavity the oral cavity larynx and pharynx if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and please support my channel have a nice day bye now